you can order your copy of my 2021 NFL Draft Guide today. What you'll get is over 550 individual prospect scouting reports like you see here, a ton of information that'll help you keep track of who your favorite team drafts or even signs as a free agent. It's all here, over 650 full color pages in PDF form. You can order your copy at the following link, footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here with football game plan scouting. And you know what that means. The NFL draft and CFL draft for 2021 is rapidly approaching and it's time to get into our prospect rankings for this year's draft class. And before we get started, let's take a look at what the grades that you'll see by the prospects actually mean. We're talking running backs today, and Najee Harris out of Alabama checks in at number one on my list. His game is very similar to that of Le'Veon Bell. He's a back who has excellent vision and fantastic footwork. Combining those two things with terrific skills in the passing game makes him the most complete back in the draft class, in my opinion. And you'd be hard pressed to find a more elusive back than Michael Carter out of North Carolina. This is a dude who can serve as his own lead blocker with how well he is able to evade defenders. Carter is also a threat to score on any given play which is definitely something that I truly value in a running back. It's a big reason why Clemson's Travis Etienne graded out pretty high for me as well. He's arguably the most explosive back in the class and really was able to refine his game this past season with the Tigers showcasing the skill set necessary as a receiver to completely round out his game. Now here is a look at the rest of my top 10. Khalil Herbert and Puka Williams were once in the same backfield together. Now they're both amongst the top prospects in the draft at the position. You can say the same thing about both Javante Williams and Michael Carter as well coming out of North Carolina. Jamar Jefferson was a stellar high school running back who parlayed that into a stellar career out there in Corvallis. Now Trey Sermon is coming off of a fantastic close to the season while Javion Hawkins and also Josh Johnson are not being talked enough about in the NFL draft media circles. Colin Hill out of Mississippi State checks in at number 11 on the list. He has the busy footwork you want, which helps him be an excellent pick and slide runner. He's able to confidently work front side to back side with his vision and has a good body lean to burrow through defenders. And I also came away very impressed with the game of Jake Funk out of Maryland. I was surprised that he declared early for the draft, but his vision and footwork are a positive and he has very underrated skill set as a receiver coming out of the backfield. Let's take a look at the rest of the list from 11 through 20 and Brendan Knox of Marshall and CJ Marable out of Coastal Carolina are a couple of group of five running backs that were outstanding this season. Jaquan Hardy is a division two standout out of Tiffin who was on the NFL radar for quite some time now. And I do think Chris Evans of Michigan combines the perfect blend of both vision and footwork just like Trey Sermon does. He's just a smooth runner out there on the field. And Kenneth Gainwell is another solid prospect coming from what can be considered now RBU as of late that Memphis Tigers program. But Jarrett Patterson of Buffalo has been a chain mover since his freshman season. You rarely see this dude lose yards. He's proven to be a dependable player, a reliable player, and who also has put together some record-breaking performances while in college. He can affect the game in all facets. So can Louisiana's Elijah Mitchell, who has great acceleration and the ability to be a dynamic returner at the pro level. This season, he was able to take his game to another level and has a solid week of work out there at the Reese's Senior Bowl this past January. Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com and check out the clothing gallery. Do You Music with featured artist I.W. in his latest album, Season 2. You can check that out on iTunes as well as doyoumusic.com. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. Ramondre Stevenson of Oklahoma has above average footwork, vision, and balance for a bigger back, and it can be very light on his feet with regards to how he moves to and through 
the line of scrimmage. Now let's take a look at the rest of the list, 21 through 30. Shane Simpson of Virginia was excellent when he was at Towson, an FCS program in the CAA, and was able to get back out there on the field this year after recovering from an injury for the Cavaliers. He is a great receiving threat and return specialist. Raheem Boyd of Arkansas and Larry Roundtree III were solid SEC backs who should have very productive pro careers in some capacity. And Spencer Brown of UAB, Deion Jackson out of Duke, and Caleb Huntley of Ball State had some really good take this past season, helping bolster their draft stock in my eyes in the process. I was also impressed with the burst and quickness from Nebraska tailback Dietrich Mills. He's got the busy feet like Jamal Lewis. They never stop moving. And when you combine that with his excellent short area burst, he's definitely providing some pro level skills out there for scouts. I think Harry Trotter of Kansas State does as well. He's a tackle to tackle runner that doesn't dance or procrastinate at the line of scrimmage. He gets downhill pretty quickly and has good contact balance to break a couple of tackles as well. I think he's a very underrated power runner in this running back group. Moving right along with running backs 31 through 40. And wow, look at that. Another Louisiana Raging Cajun out there on the list. And Trey Regis, who they called Baby Bettis when he got there to Lafayette. But this is a guy that reminds me a lot of Jordan Howard. He could be a fun foundational back, uh, first, second down back that has good ability around the goal line. You also look at some guys that have some upside. B.J. Emmons of Florida Atlantic. And you also look at Gary Brightwell of Arizona. I just love the way those two guys run. They are finishers out there on the football field and you always have room for those guys as complimentary backs. Now, Demetric Felton of UCLA played running back exclusively last year for the Bruins, which is why I graded him as a running back. And we know down at the Senior Bowl, he was playing slot receiver. So he does give you a little bit of that flexibility, but let's talk about him as a running back. I think he's a little bit too quick to take everything outside, but when you keep him at the running back position, you now create the mismatch of using him versus linebackers, which definitely adds a bonus to your offense. Plus, you can hand him the football, and he does have the quickness to make guys miss and pick up yards and chunks. You talk about picking up yards and chunks, you want to talk about speed. And you talk about Corey Dolphin of Tulane. Now, unfortunately, he had two Achilles injuries while he was with the Green Wave, but this is a legit track guy who has home run speed and he's going to be a day one kickoff returner that can help you out on special teams turning the pages we look at running backs 41 through 50 and guys like kyle potter and justin henderson are again similar to that of jordan howard guys that could be a foundational back two down back maybe a short yardage goal line guy that can help you out i was also impressed with how Corey taylor the second ran out of tulsa this year really improved his stock keep an eye out for tj roberts of central oklahoma division two prospect that has some wiggle and a little bit of burst to add to his game as well speaking of burst you look at another special teams standout potential in kane and wangwu of iowa state he was arguably one of the best kickoff returners in college football so you're getting a guy that can help you out immediately on special teams that's a day three type of pick but one that could pay huge dividends during the regular season and we round out our list with jamal jones of arkansas state and makai Sargent of iowa two solid backs that have some work withable skills at the next level and hey we're not going to forget about our full backs that lead the way for some of these big games that we see out there on saturday ben mason of michigan graded out as the number one fullback in the draft class he's just consistent iso blocks are outstanding he's able to get guys completely out of the way and always does a fantastic job of clearing out space for the tailback now let's take a look at some of my favorite running back superlatives for the draft class the best vision i would have to give that to jamar jefferson he graded out really high in that area he sees the field like kareem hunt does where you see it but i don't think he can get there but a guy like jefferson and kareem hunt are always able to get there despite you as the one that didn't have the vision or footwork been able to do so great job by him being able to see the field from front side to back side the most elusive we talked about that earlier michael carter out of north carolina the strongest runner spencer brown of uab man he is violent when he runs the football and is able to power through arm tackles and some defenders that are squared up in the hole as well best hands quietly Najee harris has some of the best hands at the position he catches the football well underneath and also down the field in the passing game so he's a true dual threat at the position the fastest we talked about that earlier travis etienne out of clemson legit track speed small school standout not really many this year to choose from uh, but jaquan hardy fits that role of a guy that you should keep an eye on coming from a smaller school best in pass pro brendan knox of marshall has tremendous ability in that regard he has good body lean good pad level good control and gets a good pop upon contact and always knows 
who to attack in blitz pickup. The most underrated, I'm going with Deion Jackson out of Duke. Quietly, he reminds me a lot of Theo Riddick, a guy that you could line up in the slot and he could serve his purpose very well as a receiver, but he showed some outstanding running skills this year, being more of the full-time guy in that backfield for the Blue Devils. So keep an eye out for Deion Jackson. The biggest sleeper, I would say Josh Johnson of UL Monroe. This is a guy that has the perfect frame in my opinion. He's 5'9", about 20 to 15 pounds. You can't really knock him over. He has great balance. You just knock him to the side. He's able to break those tackles. You go back and watch his game against Florida State in 2019. He put together a nice effort out there against the Seminoles, but he's one of those players coming from the Sunbelt Conference that we don't talk enough about, but he has big time game. And the best game breaker, in my opinion, is Puka Williams out of Kansas. This dude strings moves together like a jazz player does notes. This is an outstanding tailback. Don't get caught up in the 5'10". 170 pound frame this dude can run tough inside he's a good inside zone outside zone runner and we already know he can help you out in a return game as well but i think he's the best game breaker in the running back draft class this season so that's it for this edition of football game plan scouting i'm emory hunt the czar of the playbook be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the football game plan network located at youtube.com slash football game plan also subscribe on itunes to football game plan podcast and leave us a five star rating that's where you can find our scout team podcast and keep it locked every thursday at 6 30 p.m eastern time on the game plus network for our scout team show where we will have a lot more of nfl and cfl draft related content coming down the pike